I wanted to make a quick video explaining the use of the Skywave collimator, and uh, this is something that I've been using to uh, collimate my Ritchie Chrétien telescopes, and I found it a little difficult to get going with, so hopefully this might be useful. So Skywave collimator is standalone software that doesn't need to be connected to any of your equipment. Uh, basically, you make uh, images according to its specifications uh, with a defocused star and you feed those, you make them with your normal acquisition software and then you load those images into Skywave. Um, it has a licensing system, which is a little complicated, uh, but ultimately you can either pay per use and it takes when you've got everything dialed in between three and maybe three to four credits uh, to collimate one telescope one time. So you get 64 credits with a pay per use license and those can be topped up or you can pay for an unlimited license. Um, so I'm using paper use, uh, so I've got 49 credits remaining on this installation, and this is um, using my uh, Ritchie Chrétien 12-inch RC. I have this installed on the mini PC that's controlling the camera, and you um, put in the details of your telescope, and you send that off to the, um, the developer of Skywave, and he will send you back a mathematical model of that telescope, which you then load into here, and you also have your license that you set up. So this is a 2.4 meter telescope, um, no reducer. There's the aperture there, central obstruction, which is done by diameter, not by area. Pixel size of your camera. Um, this is the wavelength uh, of the filter you're using. They recommend using the red filter if you're using a mono system uh, because it minimizes seeing artifacts. So 650 nanometers is the center of a standard red filter, uh, and then you're seeing. So you can change um, your seeing, you can change the uh, camera uh, pixel size, and you can change the focal length of the telescope by uh, having a reducer, for example, without any, without having to go back to the developer. Um, so once you have all that set up, uh, you can then go into the analysis and you connect you select your telescope. If you've got more than one, you choose the right one. You connect the uh, software here, and uh, then you load an image. And so it tells you over here on the right-hand side what it wants your image to be. So it, you need to defocus a star. So you, what you do is you point your uh, telescope at a star that you want to use. It should be fairly bright, I think between minus one and four magnitude. Um, and you defocus it by the amount specified here in the selected defocus. So this is in microns, so it's 6,827 6, microns. So that means your focuser has to be moved from proper focus uh, out or inward, depending on how you choose to do it, that amount. Uh, so you have to measure how many microns per step your focuser moves, and that's fairly easy to do. You basically take a measurement, a physical measurement of the focuser position, move it by a certain amount of microns, um, or sorry, sorry, a certain amount of steps, and then measure the new position, um, divide the difference by the number of steps you moved, and then multiply the result by a thousand, and that gives you the number of microns. You can Google that, it's very straightforward to do. So that will, so once you figure that out, you know, for example, on my focuser, it moves about three microns per step, so uh, I divide three into this number, and that gives me the number of steps to move from perfect focus. So once you have your star defocused, you make a photograph of it. Now with the Ritchie Cretien design, you need to um, take measurements on axis, which is in the center of the frame, and off axis. Um, so the on axis measurement is done for coma. And the nice thing, if I load an image here, and I'm gonna burn a credit to do this. So I'm gonna load uh, an image that I used to that was the, the last image that I took after I did my last calibration. So this shows, uh, sorry, my last collimation. This shows pretty good collimation. So it's going to load the image now. And you'll see it's loaded. It's actually zoomed in and it's got a defocus star here. And it's telling me to analyze the star. When I do this, it'll burn a credit. Um, if I go here to fit the screen, you can see this image actually has not just one star in the center, but eight stars around it. These are all the same star. 
I think this is a really important thing. With the software, when you, um, when you load an image, you can analyze as many stars as you like in that image and only burn one credit. Um, so what you want to do is you want to get basically all of your information in one image. So the way I do that is I center on my chosen star, which is a, you know, a bright star anywhere uh, that's high in the sky. Uh, and then I have Nina. So if I go to Nina on this computer here, I have a sequence setup that will center on the star, defocus the focuser by the correct amount, uh, take an exposure with the red filter, that's 10 seconds, I'd recommend no shorter than 10 seconds, um, and then slew to these, all these coordinates, these eight different coordinates here that put that star at different parts, parts of the frame, and then take another 10 second image. And then when it's done, it moves the focuser back to correct focus, and then I can start again. So then I'm left with a series of nine images. So there's an image with the star centered. There we have the star top right, top, and so on. So as I move through these, you'll see the star moves around the frame. And then in PixInsight or your software of choice, all you need to do is go to image integration, load those files. Uh, let's see, go here. Pictures, light. Uh, okay, so this is, these are the pictures that were made up of that. So I've got nine images there. Into image integration, uh, no normalization, don't care about the weights, and very importantly, no rejection. And have it um, integrate those together. And at the end of the integration, you'd be left with an image that has that pattern that I saw before, that same star basically just placed around the image at various points. So we'll just let that continue so you can see it. So this is our integration. You can see the pattern here. Let me just stretch it. So there we go. So there's our pattern. And then we save that as a FITS file and open it in Skyway Collimator. So we go back to here. And that's how we get this image here. There's a drop down that shows all the selected stars. There's nine shown here. And then if I go over to the uh, collimator, I have a target here. Now I've got my, it shows the defocus star, which is the center one that we selected. That's the one that usually gets selected first. You can tell what position it's in because the X, sorry, the Y and the X uh, axes here show that this star is seven, seven pixels off the center there, five pixels off the center there. Uh, this bar here tells us the defocus amount, so it's 45 microns off of the perfect defocus amount, which is fine. This is green, that's good. And then we have our plot, uh, and it shows our collimation screws, one, two, and three, and we can set that for mirrors one or two up here. Um, sometimes on, on some telescopes, the Patterns are different between mirror one and two on this telescope, they're the same. And you need to identify your, where your collimation screws are before you, you get into this. And the way you do that uh, is there's a, actually a document here. This is the quick start uh, document from Skywave. If you see here, this is our secondary mirror, our primary mirror, and then this is how the, everything plots out on the collimator uh, chart. And what you do is you place an object, um, so this is an example with a schmidt cassegrain but you place an object like at your finger or some sort of pointing device, um, pointing from the edge of the telescope to, this, to the collimation screw, the secondary screw, and you'll see the image on the defocus star, and that's your position. But it's very important to note that if you are extra focal, so if your focuser, if you, if you move your focuser out from the point of ideal focus, uh, then you actually have to invert this position. So even though this says position one, we actually need to rotate using the angle indicator here. We need to rotate screw one. So let's say in my case, 
through one is actually the top of the um, uh, of the secondary spider, and on my image, on my image of the defocus star, the mark would be on the top here. But because I've moved my focuser outward from the point of ideal focus, which tends to, I think, be the easier thing to do because you might not have enough inward travel to do this, uh, I needed to invert the position of the screw so it was on the bottom. And that's stated clearly in the, in the document here. Uh, they say, yeah, so in the case of this, the screw position one is there. So he's marked it here for an intrafocal but there for extra focal, extra focal being focusing outward. So that's a very important thing to do. If you mess that up, you're going to be, your screws are going to be in the wrong place and you won't know what to do. So now that we've got this here, I'm going to analyze that set selected star um, because the first thing I want to do is check for coma. For Richie Cretiens, you just choose coma in the optical analysis window, hit analyze. It's going to think about it. Uh, do it again there. There we go. So it's now giving me a point on the plot here. So it says 9.5 out of 10. I could tweak this a bit more, uh, but it's pretty good. So on axis coma uh, is pretty much taken care of here. And you can see the defocus star is nicely concentric as well. Um, so that is a good result. If I wanted to tweak that, I would pull uh, the primary mirror, because the primary mirror is what we adjust for coma. I would pull the primary mirror by uh, adjusting screw, actually screw one in this case, because that's the closest one. So basically, if it's on this side, you pull the mirror in with that screw. So you move the mirror towards the back of the telescope. Um, and then once you've done that, you would take your images again. And this is really where having it be a sequence in Nina is really handy because all I need to do now is Nina is reset the sequence and run it again. It'll center the star, take the series of photographs, and I load them into uh, PixInsight and uh, integrate them and then load them back into the collimator. So there's a few minutes between each one. When you're dealing with coma, which is the first thing you do, you don't really need the full pattern. You just need the central star. So you don't need to do, you just take one image and in fact, that's why in my Nina sequence, I have uh, a delay of 10 seconds here that lets me just stop the sequence before it continues on to the rest of these if I'm just doing the initial coma adjustment. So with this, you know, two or three iterations of this is enough to bring this uh, up to the center. Once this is centered or as close as you can get it, then what you need to do is take a new set of images. And this time we disable coma and we go to astigmatism. Astigmatism is taken care of, it's off axis and it's taken care of by the secondary mirror only. So we make sure our mirror is selected to two. It doesn't matter with this telescope because the pattern is the same for both of them. But I have one of my other telescopes, the pattern is inverted. Um, so it's important to make sure that you have the right thing selected. And then I choose one of the off axis stars. So there's this one here. It's There's our defocus star. We've got no score because we haven't analyzed it yet. We can see that this is offset on the x-axis, but not on the y-axis. So this is the star center top. Um, and I can now analyze it. So you can see I've got 49 credits left. If I analyze this, when it, sometimes you have to click it twice. When I analyze it, it didn't burn a credit because it's already analyzed this picture. And so you can see here, this is 9.7, which is very good. The goal with the astigmatism is to go through and analyze each one and you want to balance them. So the numbers, the score numbers should all be the same or close to the same. There shouldn't be a big spread. If there's a spread, then as you've done all these plots, and of course these are all well balanced because I have already collimated this telescope. Uh, what you do is after analyzing them all, let's say the worst one was out here, so somewhere out along the three. What you would do is you would pull the secondary mirror at the position indicated. So if it was here, I would pull the th screw three on the secondary mirror. If it was over here, I'd pull screw two. 
and then after making my adjustment, what I think I need to do, so if it was out here, I might do a fairly significant, maybe like a quarter a turn or a half turn of the screw. And then I would take another series of images, load them back in here, go through the whole process again of analyzing each one, see where the worst one was and make the adjustment again. And gradually you'll bring them close to the center. Um, and depending on, on what sort of curvature your telescope has, your final astigmatism scores might be not green, they might be yellow. Um, it depends on how flat your field is. My field is fairly flat, so I have good scores. But the, the, thing, and the important thing is not that they be high scores, but that they be balanced. They don't even have to be spread out in, in the same way, but if they're clustered around the same point and they're all getting about the same score, even if some are on this side and some are on that side, it doesn't matter. Uh, if they're balanced, it's good. And you should see in the raw image, if you go all the way out, you should see the pattern of the stars and we can adjust the brightness uh, of this by adjusting the slider here. So if we look at the stars, the astigmatism, which will be a change in shape of the stars, should be balanced. Um, if I zoom in here a little bit, you can see that these are actually not concentric, but they are all pointing toward the center, right? The, the astigmatism is balanced. And once it's balanced, you're collimated. Uh, I hope that's useful. Um, the way that I arrived at the, this sequence here is by using this spreadsheet in the, on cloudy nights in the vendor forum, there's a post about Skywave and one of the users there uh, put this spreadsheet up, which he devised where he puts in the field of view of the camera in um, hours, minutes, and seconds of arc minutes. And then from that, you can calculate what the uh, the coordinates for the various star positions need to be. And I basically just copied those results in here. Uh, but that that is talked about more in that forum post. I won't go into it here. Sorry for the long video. Hopefully that's useful and uh, clear skies.